Bottom of the hour, I'm Brooke Baldwin, and today this new twist to the Miami Dolphins bullying scandal. Some Dolphins players are coming to the defense of Richie Incognito, suspended after he allegedly bullied Jonathan Martin. Here is quarterback on the team here, Ryan Tannehill. I think if you would ask John Martin a week before, you know, who his best friend on the team was, he would have said Richie Incognito. Uh, the first guy to stand up for, for Jonathan when anything went down on the field, any kind of tussle, Richie was the first guy there. Pro Football Talk reports that Martin's agent complained before Martin left the team to uh, the Dolphins general manager, to Jeff Ireland, about how Richie Incognito had treat, treated Martin. And this website reports that Ireland's solution was for Martin to quote-unquote punch Incognito. And there's more. There are reports that after Martin left the team, he checked into a hospital to be treated for emotional dis distress, and Coach Joe Philbin visited him at the hospital. I want to bring in former uh, pro player Joe Ehrman, who spent 13 years in the NFL, mostly with the Baltimore Colts. So, uh, welcome, sir. Nice to see you. Uh, let me just begin with um, you know, these voicemails, the threats of death, the texts, the incognito videos that are coming out of him at a bar, you know, being this big rough and tough guy. Um, you, you just heard the sound bite. How are these Miami players now coming out and supporting this guy, incognito? Well, I think it's very conflicted, very confused there. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, I've been in and around the NFL for 40 years. Uh, I do an awful lot of uh, uh, workshops in the NFL. Every team has to have a player conduct session. The thing that moves most players off of the uh, criminal uh, sports page to the criminal page has to do with false concepts of masculinity. How and do you I mean? think embedded in this is, uh, well, it's about what does it mean to be a man? I think, uh, I think you have a culture here, and uh, it's very much uh, a microcosm of the American culture, hmm. but masculinity is built on dominance, power, and control. Hmm. And when you have someone that doesn't fit that construct, that has her own individuality, uh, I think that often creates a lot of uh, uh, tension in the midst of that. So it seems to me, uh, you know, uh, the incognito kid uh, was kind of keeper of the culture. And uh, Martin didn't quite fit that context, and uh, therefore you had uh, threats and whatever was done. Uh, I do know this, the NFL will investigate, and uh, the NFL and the NFLPA uh, won't tolerate this. It's interesting you bring that point up. I was talking to someone yesterday, and it really brings up thoughts of really what it does mean to be a man, specifically in this professional football culture. And when you hear about these reports, that, you know, of what the general manager, you know, said to, to this agent of Martin's to just punch him, or, you know, the reports that, that these coaches were telling Martin uh, to, to toughen up. I mean, this is not a normal workplace, Joe. Well, it's not, but uh, somehow we got this idea that to be kind, compassionate, and empathic is mutually exclusive of being tough, aggressive, and totally sold out to win. Uh, that Martin kid was a terrific football player uh, and just didn't have to manifest uh, uh, what other people thought that he needed to project in order to play on the field. It, it, let me quote you because you say this. You say, what about the bystanders who knew, watched, and did nothing? If this was happening, they all knew. Seems to me that there is a lack of moral courage and moral clarity by many on the team. Are you talking about, I mean, you, like you say, you've been around pro football for decades. This isn't just players. This is coaches, possibly general manager. Is this a Miami problem, Joe, or is this a league problem? Uh, I think it's an, it's an American problem. I think it's part of the entire culture. It's played out. It's played out wherever you have hyper-masculinity. You have homophobia. You have all kinds of gender violence, misogyny. And you have bullying and hazing. I think when men don't understand themselves, when their hearts are disconnected from their heads, which is what much of uh, masculinity tries to do with young boys, um, you have this lack of empathy. But and it, it seems is the to me most a lack popular... Of empathy that they're it is the most popular sport in America. Doesn't seem to matter for fans, does it? Uh, no, I think fans uh, uh, project it, but I think it matters for many fans. It projects what a man's supposed to be like, and I think what we have to do is, is dismantle that. I think uh, how you perceive people uh, dictates how you treat them. Mm -hmm. uh, that man was uh, considered outside of the cultural box called all kinds of names to try to get him to climb back into that box. Mm -hmm. As an individual, it appears to me he stood up for his own uh, authenticity as a man and as a player, and uh, that was not well received. Mm -hmm. Joe Ehrman, great perspective today. Thank you so much.